Here are nine things Star Wars borrowed from Dune. This is Nerdist Now. Star Wars is a franchise that proudly wears its influences on its space sleeve. From sci-fi serials like Flash Gordon to the films of Akira Kurosawa, George Lucas's Galaxy Far Far Away drew inspiration from a wealth of sources. However, one of the most overlooked inspirations for Star Wars is, coincidentally, one of its biggest. Frank Herbert's Dune. Star Wars shares so much DNA with the 1965 sci-fi epic that Frank Herbert told a newspaper in Oregon, I'm gonna try very hard not to sue. And now at Denis Villeneuve's new feature film adaptation of Dune, those similarities are starting to bubble to the surface once more. So with the aid of Nerdist contributing editor Lindsay Romain, here's a rundown of some of the major things that Star Wars borrowed from Dune. And a quick word of warning, this video will contain spoilers for both Dune and Star Wars, so if you're worried about that kind of thing, make like Darth Maul and just fall back. Alright, let's start with the most obvious example, Tatooine and Arrakis. The most famous planets in each franchise are these arid desert worlds where our handsome young protagonists, Luke Skywalker and Paul Atreides respectively, receive the call to destiny and embark on the hero's journey. Very interesting. Next we have moisture farmers and dew collectors, so water is obviously a precious commodity on both planets and must be harvested for survival. On Tatooine, Luke's family are moisture farmers, extracting water from the atmosphere. And on Arrakis, in Dune, they employ devices called dew collectors much for the same purpose. Next we've got sand crawlers. Getting around in the desert is no easy task on either world. In Star Wars, the Jawas use sand crawlers, vehicles left over from a forgotten mining era long ago. In Dune, sand crawlers are used to traverse the desert to help mine for melange, better known as the spice, which brings us to our next example. The spice! That's right, folks. Both Star Wars and Dune have a powerful prized drug known as the spice. It has to be mined in extremely harsh conditions, can be extremely dangerous in the wrong hands and is incredibly valuable. The mines of Kessel in Star Wars are chock full of it, whereas in Dune, it's the most sought after substance in the galaxy and only found on Arrakis. Next up we have the Sarlacc and Sandworms. Now both franchises boast similar desert planets and similar giant sand dwelling creatures that have many toothed mouths. Especially when we look at both from overhead, the Sarlacc bears a striking resemblance to Dune's Sandworms, but sadly only one wound up eating Boba Fett. <laughs> Moving along, we come to Princess Leia and Aaliyah. So in Star Wars, Princess Leia is the sister of Luke Skywalker, and the two share a powerful spiritual and psychic connection. Whereas in Dune, Paul Atreides has a sister, Aaliyah, and guess what? The two also share a powerful spiritual and psychic connection. Next, we have the Force and the Voice. So in the world of Star Wars, the Force is the mystical power that enables its users to perform feats of persuasion and manipulation like Jedi mind tricks. In Dune, the Bene Gesserit Sisterhood uses the Voice, a power acquired through mental conditioning that allows them to compel and control others' minds. So yet another similarity there. Move along. Next we come to Evil Empire. Star Wars has the Galactic Empire, Dune has the Imperium, and I know this seems like a bit of a stretch because the Evil Empire motif is such an iconic trope, but both of these sci-fi sagas feature an evil authoritarian government ruled over by an emperor, and they culminate with the collapse of that old totalitarian system of government, so draw your own conclusions. Last but not least, we have one of my favorite and the silliest example, royal slug creatures. That's right, in Return of the Jedi, we see Jabba the Hutt's palace. This gluttonous, slug-like creature lays atop a dais living like a king on Tatooine. And in later Dune books, Paul Atreides' son, Leto II, slowly morphs into a sandworm-like hybrid creature atop a dais who just so happens to be royalty. And that's just the tip of the Spiceberg Dunatics in Star Warriors, because we have a full list of everything Star Wars borrowed from Dune over on Nerdist.com, and I'll put that link down in the description below if you want to check it out. But in the meantime, I'm curious. Tell me, what do you think of all this? What other similarities between Dune and Star Wars have you spotted? What do you think of the new Dune trailer? Let me know in the comments below and give me a thumbs up and a like while you're down there. Thank you so much for watching and for even more deep dives into the world of pop culture. Make sure you stay tuned for future episodes of Nerdist Now.